Providing early warning against the deadly, often invisible smoke generated during the early stages of a fire makes smoke alarms the ultimate in fire protection. Let's learn more about how a typical fire develops. This chart shows how a fire progresses. During the initial stage, the fire gives out invisible vapors. During the smoldering stage, smoke and fumes blow out, causing a sudden blaze as vapors ignite. Almost everyone's home is full of nylons, synthetics, and other flammable materials. Burning synthetics give off toxic fumes, such as hydrogen chloride, hydrogen cyanide, and carbon monoxide. Tragically, people can be asphyxiated while they sleep long before the flames reach them. Remember, it's usually the toxic smoke that kills, not the flames. Obviously, the sooner smoke is detected, the more chance you'll have of saving your property and your life. Installing quality smoke alarms ensures 24-hour-a-day protection for your family and your home against fire and smoke. It is one of the most valuable investments you will ever make. Over the next few minutes, we'll guide you through some of the most important aspects of selecting, installing and maintaining your smoke alarms for maximum effectiveness. Smoke alarms can either be mains powered or battery powered. Battery powered smoke alarms are commonly available from supermarkets and hardware stores. These types of alarms do not comply with the required regulations for new buildings as they offer an inferior level of protection. Battery alarms have a big weakness. They rely on you to test and change the battery on a regular basis. All too often we get lazy or forget to do this and the results can be catastrophic. In the event the battery goes flat, the alarm cannot detect smoke and will not alert occupants of any danger. All mains powered smoke alarms have a continuous source of power and also incorporate a backup battery. That way the alarm can respond to the presence of smoke even if the mains power is cut. Mains powered smoke alarms can also be interconnected so that when one alarm trips, they all sound, ensuring adequate warning and the best possible reaction time. There are two main types of smoke detectors, ionization and photoelectric. Each is specifically designed to detect different types of smoke and give the earliest possible warning in the event of a fire. The amount of warning given depends on the type of combustible material that's burning and the type of alarm selected for your home. Watch this demonstration of an actual fire. The images seen are in real time and show how quickly a house can be filled with deadly toxic smoke. Remember, it's usually the smoke that kills, not the flames. Ionization type alarms respond faster to small smoke particles, such as those given off by burning paper, straw or wood. Photoelectric alarms respond faster to larger smoke particles, such as those produced by burning foam, rubber, plastics, and other synthetic materials. Nowadays, most homes are filled with synthetic materials. These include nylon found in carpets and curtains, plastic consumer goods, and the foam rubber found in a lounge chair or mattress of your bed. The best detector for your home is usually, therefore, a photoelectric detector type. For the ultimate protection, a combination of both ionization and photoelectric is recommended. The number of smoke alarms needed for adequate protection, as well as the correct placement of each alarm, will vary according to the plan and layout of your home. Here is the floor plan of a typical house with only a couple of standalone alarms. One placed outside the bedroom and the other outside the kitchen in the living room. Let's say the fire starts in the family room. The smoke fills the first room before reaching the living room alarm. The alarm in the bedroom doesn't activate and the living room alarm is also too far away to be heard in the bedroom. Even if the occupants do hear the alarm, by now the house is already filled with smoke, cutting off vital escape routes out of the house. It's clear that one alarm simply is not enough to provide the maximum chances of surviving a fire. 
As a general rule of thumb, alarms need to be installed within 10 paces of a fire to detect the smoke and still give you adequate time to escape. That's why it's so important to have at least two alarms installed in your home. The best protection is an alarm in every room, excluding the kitchen, laundry and bathrooms. All alarms should be interconnected so that if smoke is detected by one alarm, all units respond and warn occupants, no matter where they are in the house. In a single-storey home like this one, the first alarm should be placed between the bedroom and living room and kitchen. These last two areas are the most likely fire sites. In a double-storey home, place alarms adjacent to the kitchen, in the living rooms, the dining room, also in the stairwell and bedrooms. They should all be interconnected. As you can see, the correct selection and placement of your smoke alarms is a critical issue. The whole subject needs careful consideration. Thankfully, your electrician has been fully trained in all aspects of fire protection and will be able to give you professional advice as part of your installation.